Hello, it's Tim Estrell, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. We're doing a live stream. You guys have been asking for it, so here it is. This is your first time to live stream. We do things a little bit different here in other channels. I, uh, well, I talk to you guys in the audience, and we interact with things, and we discuss what's going on in the latest truck world, and we uh, pour a little something-something in our drink. Tonight's going to be the Travis, Traverse City Whiskey Company. This is a distinct blend of 100% American rye and straight rye whiskey. It's called North Coast Rye, which would make sense in the and the Michigan, right? So, um, yeah, it's kind of got a cool logo on the back. I'm gonna switch my view a little bit so I can see what's going on. Let's see. Oh, yeah, cool logo on the back. It looks cool, right? Um, yeah, so uh, cool stuff going on. Um, I have a new office set up behind me. If you've not seen that, da -da -da. I have uh, hats over here with the logo. I was trying to do this, but I have to like sit like this. Not gonna work. Um, I have my my wife bought me this picture. Other finger. Uh -huh. A couple years ago, and uh, finally got it framed. Purdue. Um, it is the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. Yeah, so it's the uh, Super Bowl. One, uh, Super Bowl one? No, it's the uh, Green Bay Packers, Dallas Cowboys. I believe it's it. NFL Championship game or NFC Championship game? One of those two. Uh, yeah, so that's what's going on there. Oh, and I have um, the the craziest damn thing ever. I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna show you this. I'll put it back. But I now have a selfie. Um, light so i can do my makeup no i'm not doing makeup on this crap all right so this selfie light thing in the corner so yes yeah, so you can see me but uh i still have some glare problems with my hat but check it out i'm not losing the hat sorry i hear this duck bill glare thing i've tried some different stuff with it tell me some white paper i do some white paper it like makes a difference Yeah, I don't think so. All right, so uh, we're talking uh, what I picked tonight. I, I start with a topic, and then it qu quickly devolves into all things trucks and SUVs. And uh, I will get to your comments here in a second. I got to open this. Requires the um, all of my attention to do this right. You cannot screw this up. All right. Oh yeah. Ooh, a little tasty. Uh, Trevor City Whiskey sent me this. They have a cool hat. I... Hmm. That I neglected to put on the wall. <laughs> Whoops. All right, uh, I'm gonna pour this. Get to your questions. So the news was today. There's a couple of news items. Um, that's a healthy pour. Um, a couple of news items was that the uh, Ford Bronco is gonna come out in a no March. March they're gonna do an unveiling. I have not gotten any invites yet. Have not heard anything from Ford yet. But they told dealers that they're gonna show it off in March. They will show off the baby Bronco probably in April at New York City Auto Show, which I will not be going to New York City unless. Hell freezes over. That show is ridiculous. All right, and um, yeah, so that's what's going on. Um, I have some travel coming up with it in a little bit, but uh, sorry, I painted my kid's Boy, or Boy Scouts Pinewood Derby car, and I got blue and red paint all over my fingers. So um, let me uh, drink a little bit, and we'll get to the uh, comments. I can see it going crazy. Hmm. Pretty good stuff, maybe. All right, so um, before I get to all this stuff, remember if, if you're new to the channel, first time live streams on this channel, I do truck news, truck reviews, cool truck stories. I fly places, drive trucks. I have a good time. I love trucks by passion. You should subscribe. You should hang around. You should click the like button on these videos and keep supporting the channel. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, also, really awkward to see myself on camera doing this, and so I'm going to try to get rid of this screen too because that doesn't work for you. Anyways, um, your support makes this happen. I feel like a bit of like a PBS show, like, your support of PBS makes this happen. But anyways, that's what's going on. All right, uh, da, 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 let's go. Uh, I'm going back here. Yeah, da, flooding in Mississippi. Sorry, Johnny Five, I saw that. Better get you a rowboat. And a little, uh, you, need, you know what Johnny Five you need? You need a little uh, uh, duck, the little duck like, uh, what do they call those things? <sighs> Like the blow-up duck thing that you put around your belly. Yeah. Duck lifesaver. Ducky. Yeah. Uh, Javier is here. Jonathan is here. Korate is here. Jeff is here. I always want to say Korate. I always want to say it like it's uh, Kung Fu. Like, Korate is here. He's good. Korate is here. He's a good guy. Korate. Yeah. Uh, how are you, family? We're doing fine. Juan, we had some snow come through. And uh, the kids were off today because of President's Day. And the little buggers go back to school tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, I've been busy. Um, 
about a little strong, a small live stream. Yeah, I don't know if it'll make the whole live stream. We have to uh, go out to the uh, the stash of other whiskeys to get going. Go out to the stash, get some more. Um, Fixie Claire, F Fixie Claire, Clary, Fixie Clary. Yeah, how you doing, Fixie? Uh, yeah, first time I've seen you. Old school blowtorch. Yes, it is. It is. Um, I got that from I got that from my dad who gave it to me. And uh, I, I don't know where he got it, but I thought it was pretty cool. There's a jack right here and a hubcap. Let me move. The hubcap and the jack and this, which is catches the hay. The hay, hook the hay with it. That's a little dangerous. I'm going to put this back on the shelf. Um, the jack was out of Swede, my 62. The hubcap I found at the farm, which I think was from my 62. And the hay snatcher or hook was in the 62 as well. So, yeah, uh, lots of cool stuff. Um, and cool travels, I've GMC, Nissan Titan stuff up there, my infamous cup, if I, if I showed you guys my cup, <laughs> this is funny, so, i clean it off a little bit, alright, so I had this cup made a couple years ago, I was in Michigan, and we're traveling through, and I had this cup made, so I'm going to let you guys uh, read it first of all, i get my other camera so I can make sure you guys can see this, there it is, uh, let me move towards the light, there we go, it says, Top Nebraska Automotive Journalist of the Year Award, Tim Estradol, my name, right? 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 2020 plus. So somebody asked me about this, and uh, I, uh, I posted about it, and my people were like, oh, congratulations, congratulations. And I was like, you're not getting a joke here? Because it's a big joke. I'm really the only Nebraska journalist that still does a lot of auto journalism stuff. There's another guy, but a lot of facts get in the way of good story. Anyways. So I had this cup made, and I put it up there. People congratulated me. Then people were like, wait a minute. You said 2020 plus. Yeah. What's wrong with that? 2020 plus. And they were like, well, how could you win? And I had that made like in 2017. And so they're like, how can you win the awards for future years? I'm like, you're not getting a joke here, right? I, I feel like I'm taking these kids and explaining them how this joke works. I'm like, this is, this is how this joke works. And they were like, well, well. so I had a cousin. He goes, well, what if somebody else moves to Nebraska and they're a journalist? And let's just say they're a better journalist than you are. Wouldn't they then get the award? And I said, it's my damn award. I'm giving it to who I want to, which is me. Why would I give it to somebody else? I'm not going to do that. Screw that. That's my award. So that's my uh, sense of humor um, on, the, on the cup. So if you guys think that's funny, I should actually sell those. I should, I should make those cups. They're pretty funny. Uh, good off was like, hey, thanks, Javier. It was uh, a lot of work. I, uh, it was actually a lot of work. It took me a whole damn weekend. Not this box. Yeah. All right, get rid of that box. So, uh, yes, the ring light. Yes, the halo. Yes, it's remarkable. Halo is <laughs> I am happy that the Bronco is going to debate, debut in March, but we should believe it because Ford hasn't let us press the presentation. I tell you what, I'm so damn happy that Bronco is being revealed. It released. I'm so done running videos on it. I saw something the other day that said they started teasing that in 2017. That's three years of teasing. Three years of teasing. All right. Uh, hey, Brandon. Brandon is here from San Fran. Wine is fine, but liquor is quicker. <laughs> Not buying the Bronco coming in March. They have been saying that for years. Yes, three years. They said make a truck for. No, he <laughs> made a car. <laughs> that would be cool to have a truck. What is down here? God, shit. Ah. Still organizing in my office. Still got work to do. Uh, let's see. Uh, swing ring. Yeah, floaty. That's what I was thinking. A duck floaty. Enjoy your whiskey. Cheers. Thanks, Juan. Did you get in touch with the dur second dur mile, million mile Duramax guy? Brandon asked. I did. I have his information. We saved contact information. I have his phone number. He's in Michigan. I'm going to Michigan next week, but I will not be going by him. So I will um, hook up with him. And for those guys who are wondering, those guys who are wondering, I did find a Ram owner today. I have a million mile Ram. It's a Dodge, really. And uh, what's interesting, this guy, and I, I kind of wait, I can't wait to do this guy's story. He is on his third Cummins engine for this truck. And I think, I, I wasn't going to do it. I've always thought that original engine's got to be original million mile truck. But this guy's got like 1.4 million miles on his third engine. And so I'm really curious to see 
why he kept with the truck. Why he didn't just you know jettison the truck because the truck can't be worth anything at you know a million miles on it. But he's three engines, and Cummins is known for reliability. Three engines, so it's going to be. I think it's really interesting. He's in Texas, so I have two more million mile trucks on queued, and I will get to those well as I can. I'm still looking for another uh, Ford. I'm looking for another uh, Dodge or Ram. I have Cummins helping me out as well. So Cummins is looking out there too. If you guys see Million Mile Trucks on forums, on Facebook, whatever, shoot me messages. I want to get hold of these guys. I want to do their stories. I think it's just something about hitting that mark that makes it really interesting to me. And I like talking to these guys and seeing what their stories are. And um, uh, how do you like the new Escalade? Uh, <laughs> Elliot, firing away, Elliot, firing away. You always get hit. Elliot get fired away. Mm. I, I think it's... Um, it was a topic in Chicago at the auto show when I was there. We were all discussing it. And I had, did not get to see it in person. I don't know. Maybe it was there. Maybe I missed it. I may have missed it. I was kind of busy talking. As, well, you guys kind of figured that out, right? And uh, it feels like the uh, front grill is, like, massive. Like, they built this vehicle. They put the front grill on. It's like in, like, in Photoshop. Like when you, like, uh, transform an object, you make it bigger than you need to. It's like they took the grill off, put it bigger than you need to. So I'm waiting to see that front grill in person. And that screen is just ridiculous. So I'm going to wait and see what the pricing is. So I'm kind of holding off. I'm kind of like, well, it's good. But I've always been um, a little anti-Escalade. But to be honest with you, I've been, I, I just, I dro drove one for a press loan a couple years ago. And I really liked the GMC Yukon a lot better. I thought for the money and for the value and what you had, I thought it was a lot better. So those are kind of my thoughts. Woohoo! The Nissan Nation podcast is here in the house. He's wearing this cool new hat I sent him. And uh, I was watching his live stream yesterday. It was kind of fun. Um, it's, it's fun to watch his live stream and my live stream. And I don't know. We have a good time. So David Boyd is here. Hey, I hate the... Juan says, I hate the 85-degree heat and love the cold weather. You want to trade? Yes. Yes. I'm going to Florida in two weeks because I want to play golf with my dad and sit around with shorts. So I'm out of here. Later. So I'm going on vacation. So I have uh, videos. Um, I have a slew of videos that are all going to be queued up while I'm gone so you guys can still... See me when I'm not here and really enjoy the ambience of my voice. But, uh, or if you can understand me or not, I'm getting still getting comments like, you talk too fast, you damn, you slow down a little bit. But that's the way I talk, so. <laughs> On you. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm taking a vacation, so um, you guys gotta make sure you keep watching. Because it's like the only All right. Golly. Uh, Fixie says, my 1989 Ford Aerostar van, I had a few years ago, it had a stroop back like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the old screw jack. Yep. That, I, I don't know if it works. I'd have to oil it up and see if it works. But I'm, I'm constantly watching that stuff on Facebook. The guys, like, restore something back to original. Holy cow. I should send them that. That'd be really cool. If you have to explain a joke, then there's no joke. The Joker. <laughs> Fixie gets it. And, yeah, I was like, you know that. Uh, Sam, the sham, says, I own the last model year Bronco, 1996, with the Windsor 351. Yep. That's a cool Bronco. That's the uh, OJ style. Traded in a new 2008 Tundra, which I kept it along with Tundra. The Bronco was a terrific rig. Yeah, yeah. I I think that w when the Ford Bronco finally gets unveiled, nobody's going to be happy. <laughs> That's what I think. I think at this point, it's been teased so much, and the purists are going to hate it, and the other people are going to love it. It's just, it's. I'm telling you, nobody's going to like it. That's what's going to happen. Journalist Moon Nebraska and Herds to win the Journalist of the Year Award. <laughs> It comes with a with a uh, well done award uh, like trophy as well. Besides the cup, you get a uh, steaming gold pile of yeah. So yeah, yeah you guys can fill in, in there. I don't want to cuss these live streams because it turns out my kids watch these live streams. And sorry guys, I'm not cussing on live streams. I will um, enjoy the apple juice though. <laughs> yes, I made my yes yes. Juan gets it. I need a bell. Congratulations, Juan. You get that. Finally, Bronco. 20, uh, 28, 2,800. More room for the in-laws and visiting. They're all their <laughs> I had a 2014. I, the, the reason I bought it was the kids who sit in the back seats and not touch each other. I was also managing Tundra headquarters at the time, and I wanted a truck. I was, if I was going to report on a truck, I needed to own the truck, right? That made sense. And so I owned up well. I'm probably the only journalist in the country that's actually um, owned a newer Tundra. A lot of guys will, um, a lot of guys I know will own the old T100 Tundra, the 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 five eighths Tundra. Um, not many own the new one. 
It says January 2017 at the NIAS for the Bronco. Yes. Yeah, it's been a long time. Fail on Ford's end by not using the F-150 platform with the Bronco. Kyle, I, I would agree. I think there's a place for that. But uh, I think they're thinking that's going to be the expedition. I thought it was interesting. I've been watching a lot of stuff on this lately. Uh, how badly Ford screwed up the Explorer launch from the factory and how many problems they're having that Joe Hendricks got fired basically because he couldn't launch the, the Explorer. And so it's like they have uh, Bronco coming out, Baby Bronco, the mach -E, and they have the uh, – I'm not calling it Mustang. I'm calling it mach -E. They have the mach -E, and then they have the uh, new redesigned F-150 with a hybrid version as well. And so they have a lot running on them, uh, launching trucks and these vehicles on time in the marketplace. And so they better fix their problems. Uh, Woohoo! No matter what the Bronco looks like, it'll be a point. Yeah. I made a Pinewood Derby truck when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, Brandon. <laughs> if I could convince him, I could convince him. Uh, Last Star Foster says, uh, how many cracked shadow dashes in the million mile dodge is a real question. <laughs> I know. I, uh, I, I, I said this to somebody the other day. I said, you know, I, I think I found one and my friend I was talking to says, I didn't know a dodge could go that far. <laughs> I was like, well, I found one. So I'm, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to look it up. I'm looking it up. I don't think the 1.4 million mile ramp should count. Three motors. Holy cow, you guys getting money too. Hold on. Um... That's three different trucks going 1.4 million miles. I just find it interesting. I find it just interesting why you would keep a hold of that truck for that long, um, even with three different motors. Uh, Jeff wants to know, is there a big ride difference between the Escalade and the Denali? Uh, I don't know yet. We haven't driven those, uh, rode those yet, but I don't believe there used to be. It used to be the Escalade just had more um, bling. David gave me dollar ninety nine. Thanks, David. And uh, Jeff from Karate gave me... Uh, Karate, give me twenty dollars. Wow, guys! And four truck guy Kyle built four truck. Give me two dollars. Holy cow! You guys are rocking it. Maybe I do more of these. All right. Uh, wow. Negative thirty six in uh, freaking Yellowknife, Canada, or wherever you're at this this week. Yeah, at night you go to some remote, remote places. Huh. Uh, Brandon wants to know. It'll be interesting to hear what went wrong with the two engines that died in that ram. It. Uh, oil consumption is what he's telling me, so I want to get more details on it. So, yeah, I, th I just find it interesting. I do. I find it interesting. Uh, Elliot, price and features are the main difference. I would agree with that as well. I think it's about the same. That Yukon has the new uh, Magna Ride, right? <sighs> do so many of these trips. I believe it's got the new Magna Ride rear suspension because they redid the frame and they redid the independent rear, independent front, so they really improved the ride quality on the higher trim level, which would be the Denali trim, like you pointed out, and so I'll be, I can't, I can't wait to get the invites to drive those things, because I know, I'm, well, I'm hoping that I get the press invites, you know, it's always this thing, it's like, people assume I go to all these events, and I get these invites, well, sometimes you do, and sometimes you don't, I mean, sometimes the emails come, sometimes they don't come, it's just how things work out, uh, price, so, well, I almost know how long is vacation, I'm gone five days, one, I'm gone for the entire week. Uh, pulverizer sound effects like the million mile. <laughs> that guy was hilarious. <laughs> oh, that guy was hilarious. I'm so happy I stopped and was able to do a story. Don't you guys love that video? I just, it was, uh, it was in the middle of Houston Auto Show. I had to fly in a day early and I had to call him and meet him at the, at the place. And I'm so pissed off at the, um, uh, service center that was there. So he gets all the service done at Beckwith, the service center. And I talked to the guy in the morning. I talked to the parts manager or the service manager. He says he's going to be there. I show up and he's not. He's not there. He's gone. What a jerk move! And really irritated me because I was going to get him on camera too. I wanted to get him talking about the service on that million mile Ford, and he just freaking blew it. And so, if you notice that video, I did not put a link to Beckwith's car care in that video. Sorry, they freaking blew it. That was such an opportunity. They just they blew. Cheer with some Jack. Oh yeah. Jack and Jim are my two good friends. Um, one up, yeah, it's like competition. My mechanic, look that guy's channel up. I'm serious. He does restoration stuff that makes my jaw drop. Is it? Is it that? Yeah, Fixie? It's my mechanic. Huh. I'd look it up. I, I've watched that stuff all the time, and I just, I'm always sitting there. Uh, one, any F-150 debut soon? Any predictions? I'm thinking September. Um, September, October will be in the fall this year. I've heard other journalists say that Yukon Denali is better. Some like don't like it because it's too flashy and gaudy. I like the new interior, the new Escalade. I, yeah, I could see that. I just like the, I really like, 
to me the the Tahoe the Chevy Tahoe is like it's just too basic and I think for that price point you want more features to it and while the GMC Yukon is a lot more I think you get a lot more value on the interior but I'm gonna I'm, like I said I'm gonna check out the new Escalade interior I did see a re news report the other day that said that uh, GM is working on new Silverado heavy duty and 1500 upgrades in 2022 that will not be like the GMC Yukon or Chevy Tahoe interiors they'll be similar but better is what the the story is right now and um, yeah it's all these little tidbits of information you get that you can't you can't really do a video on, but you kind of just share on live streams. Why are you drinking whiskey? With your buddies, are giving you money. That's almost like another bottle of whiskey. Close, getting there. <laughs> Sean, there's a Ford Bronco coming out soon. I'm shocked. Yes, you should be shocked. It's finally gonna come. Uh, darn, we have to keep the cheap. Yeah, I know. I just I can't. It's th with the kids. Um. Jeez, crummy. Hey, I own a Titan well for another month, and what should I get? You're, you're, oh, you're not getting a Titan. Well, you have to get a Nissan, right? You should go get an Xterra. I think you should get an Xterra. Wasn't it T100 more than a 3.8 ton truck? I, 3.8. Well, all right, so 3.8 would be half. Yeah, all right. People called it 5.8s, 7.8s, 9.8s, whatever the hell it is. It was not a full size. It was a tweener. Tweener. Uh, tell me if the Bronco is better than the Explorer. I, the photos I've seen of the uh, Bronco so far, I just looks like a brick on wheels. And people, I, I I don't know. The comments have been crazy. I guess if that's what you think is a good looking rig, mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking of very good looking Mustang Machi. Yes, yes, yes. Mustang, Mustang, Mustang. Uh, tighten up. Yeah, do a custom Frontier build because I own uh, pulverizer because I own F. I don't see the rest of the pulverizer. All right. Okay, money's not a consideration. Which 2020 halftime 4 4 do you buy? Not, money's not a consideration? Oh, I just go buy the Raptor. <laughs> that Raptor is badass. Um, but it just depends. So the market's so so weird. So I, I'll give you my synopsis. Toyota is old technology, old truck, very reliable. Son of a gun, go through a wall and still drives. Nissan Titan is 2020 is improved. It's better. It's quality and reliability are, are actually closer to Tundra than I ex expected. Um, not, the, not, not knocking David here, not knocking David, but I think Nissan's come a long way. Is it co as competitive as it could be? I think it was competitive as of three years ago, and that's with their upgrade. So I think they're getting there, not quite there. Ford builds a solid truck, and you cannot knock them for their uh, features and options and build any truck you want to. They list, I mean, you can build any Ford you even want to, and they have some good values. If you get that, the XLT S, XT or STX, one of the two. There's a video on this channel about it. And a pretty good value, I think, in that truck, in that in that configuration. And uh, Ford just, I mean, they offer everything. You can buy whatever you want at a good price. The Chevy Silverado's, that uh, new 3-liter diesel, is very capable. The 5.3 is still a very capable engine as well. And that little turbo they have is not bad either. Interiors aren't great. Exterior styling is... Uh, the right trim, I think, looks good. The base trim with the whole black front end, I, I don't know. Looks like the truck lost somewhere. It's really weird. I feel like I can see through it. And uh, the Ram trucks, my goodness. You can't beat the right quality. You can't beat the interior. You can't beat the exterior styling. You can't beat the features. That 12-inch screen with their uh, uh, Uconnect system is amazing. Uh, but they have some issues. Reliability has always been a problem with them. Always in Achilles' seal. So, um... Yeah, that's how I see the truck market. But either, I, I mean, you can eliminate any of them, so you can't really say the Ram's terrible because I've seen Rams have good reliability. I've seen them have poor reliability. I've seen Tundra have poor reliability too. I've seen Lemon Law on both, all the trucks. And so, kind of a crapshoot. Um, I don't know. I'd love to go buy some trucks. I'm hoping this channel grows big enough I can just go buy a fleet of trucks. That's what I do. I literally have a fleet of trucks outside. Um... Let's see. My bet if I was to do a million mile trucks would be the 1983 Dodge Ram with the Slant 6. All right. All right. Um, I think the engine may still keep going. I'm not sure about the interior or the exterior or the rest of the features. <laughs> uh, yep. Yellow knife here. We get Tim's rant of the night. Uh, yes. I'm sure something will be brewing up somewhere. If you watch the rant, talk about great YouTuber Scotty Kilmer is. That's just, that's just not even fair. That's not even fair at all. Um, Ford sharing it on his 
his Facebook page. Yeah, I saw that. Cool. Thank you very much. Hmm. Yeah, I've I, I've gotten a lot of subscribers lately and a lot of attention, which is exciting. Um, really gets me inspired to keep doing this. Interiors, I mean, interior is incredibly great. Truck capable. Yeah. Talk about. Would you guys stop, Cybertruck? Hey, Gene, what's up? Gene is here. Gene sent me a book. Thank you, sir. I have not received said book though. I well, today's present day. So, but he said the. What'd you say, Gene? That the book's like shipping date was like thirty to forty-five days or something. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, yes, Brandon wants to know Million Mile Trucks in the Fort, Built for Tough page. If you guys see Million Mile Trucks, tag me. Uh, whatever you guys want to do. Tag me, email me, whatever the deal is. I will follow up with them. I got Cummins, like I said, looking out for trucks. Um, yeah, turn to sub. Half ton would probably say Titan, Titan XD, best bang for the buck. If Yeah, the gas XD, though, I don't know. I just go regular Titan at that point. There should be some pretty good incentives on it, though. Is a great person? No, yes, no. No, 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 no. I think, Tim, I already pre-ordered a cyber... No, stop with the cyber trucks. Uh, you can get the magnetic ride control and air suspension on Tau Suburban, Yukon, and Escalade, but you can't get the adjustable air suspension and magnetic ride together. You have to choose one. Hmm. Yeah, I would imagine that the Yukon and Escalade would have all those features, too. I think it's going to be really close. I think it's going to come down to features you like and price point uh, between the Escalade and Yukon. Because I, I... you know, And Escalade's got that polarizing front end to it, so it's going to be... A little bit to it. Uh, share your story about your main mod truck and Ford Truck Club. Oh, cool. This guy, this Ford Truck, I like this Ford Truck guy, Kyle. He's <laughs> a good guy. I heard Tim's going to do it. No, I'm not doing a joint live stream. This guy come wear in Cybertruck. Truck. Area looks better than this late inside it out. Ooh, fighting words. My question is, why no air ride on the Silverado Sierra? Um, the Sierra's got Magna Ride, though. You can get in the higher trim level. At least for wanting Scotty to clean up all this garage. <laughs> yeah, only 16 thumbs up. What's going on? Click the like button. That's a good price point. I have two exteriors. Oh, you have two exteriors. All right. Well, hmm. Question key. Thanks. You want an air? You want an air B right pickup? Get a yeah Ram. Uh, I think Bronco's going to be look like the last Land Rover Defender. Uh, is, is it just me on a Land Rover Defender? Do you guys think that weird plastic on the side panel is just weird? I guess I used weird there twice. But anyways, yeah, that thing just, that's stupid. Apparently it's its for capability. You could add steps to the side or add this whatever. And I was like, ridiculous. Don't want to bring back the Xterra. Oh, Dave's going to answer that. The answer would be no. Um, that's going to be quite pr priced in the equivalent truck. Yeah, the different platforms, different everything on those. Uh, I was surprised about that too. And I said to him, I said, you know, that the full-size SUV market is only 500,000 units sold annually. We sell three million light duty trucks. And I'm like, why is there only 500,000 full size SUVs? And Chevy was very frank with me. They said, look at the price point. You can't really get a Tahoe brand new for less than 40, 45,000. There's no entry level, so there's no volume there. And I'm like, why don't you make a cheaper Tahoe? Why can't you get a, a bare bones Tahoe with a rubber floor mat and uh, you know all the no chrome? Why not? Why has it got to be such a higher price point? That's it. I told you to buy an all the Rogue and lifting it for fun. <laughs> Basically, Larry, YouTube says that they've not knows me. Yeah, I get a lot of weird YouTube stuff these days. Suggested stuff's kind of crazy. I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, people are tagging me. Uh, do it up and they'll come down. STX. God damn, I can't figure that out. Several old T100s, well over 300,000 miles, still going through on original motor. I, I've seen those too. Yes, yes. What should you build, NASCAR? Na did NASCAR, did they finish the race today? I thought I saw something about the race being postponed. Uh, what do you think about 50 grand starting price for Tahoe? Yes, that's what I was just talking about, Elliot. I was just getting to the point there. I, I That's the base for remote being dealers, so a decently equipped LT would be mid 60s. I think it's ridiculous. I think they need a lower price point Tahoe, and that would drive volume. And that'd be fine. I'm all about bigger SUVs. Should be should be the Tacoma at 1.3 before I believe. What would be the first truck for the channel? Uh, if I were to go buy a truck for the channel, you know, and this may sound weird to you guys, I would go buy an XL um, Ford, and 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 I'm not trying to be biased against any brand at all. It's just to be frank with you. Ford is one of those brands that I feel like I know the least about, and so I would buy one of their trucks, or lease, I, I would lease one of their trucks, 
and I would lease it so I could learn, just, just be in their products more often. One of the reasons I have the relationship with the Ford dealer in town is that I just, I want to know more about Ford. I just do. I mean, for a truck channel to have such a, I feel like it's a blind spot. You guys may not feel that way, but I feel like I have a huge blind spot when it comes to Ford. And that's why I'm always like reporting on them and always reading about them and always trying to do more videos on them because I feel like I want to know more about Ford. And I, I just, I've always tried to do more. To do more. Um, I feel like I have a really good understanding of Toyota, really good understanding of Chevy, a really good understanding of Ram. Uh, a pretty decent understanding of Nissan, but it, just overall, Ford is a big blind spot to me. And what my plan would be simple. My plan would be that I would lease the truck for six for I do lease right, and I'd keep it for six months and sell it, take the loss because I would do the videos from it, which would pay the revenue for the loss. But my my idea would be is if I got the truck, I'd hit up aftermarket companies and I'd aftermarket and mod it and you know tires and air filters, all kind of the crap they want to send me. Crud, on the and uh, I would I would do that, and then you know do a bunch of videos on it, and then move along. And I know that you know, like TFL has been doing this a little bit. I think TFL and I kind of focus a little bit different on what they're trying to do, what I'm trying to do. And so I would do that first. And, I would, and my plan would be to work through all six manufacturers on the low end trucks. But unlike TFL, I'd go low end. I want the base minimum truck you possibly can on all six manufacturers, and kind of go through them. And I feel like once I get through the sixth one. It'd probably take me three years or so to get to the sixth one to be done with it, and then I'd flip back over and start over again. So I think that I would be able to keep that loop kind of going, and if I had relationships with the dealers in town, I think it'd be a kind of a win-win for them, win-win for me. Maybe I get some discounts to mention where I bought it from, that kind of stuff. But and that's kind of my plan. Is that that's what I would. That's that's the plan. It's been it's been in my head, percolating, percolating, in my head for a while, and I think that. Uh, that's what I'd want to do is I'd want to you know put some money down, lease it, keep for six months because with the press loans I have, I'm only going to drive it like once a week, once or twice a week, so I don't really get that many miles on it. Maybe go on a road trip here and there, you know, but I wouldn't have that many miles on it. So I think I'd be able to not lose that much money. I, I think it'd be kind of work out. That's kind of my guess. Um, uh, Sean says, "Ford losing me with their interior styling. Look like Costco made an interior." <laughs> I will tell their engineers last next time I drive with them. Give us the truth about riding in a hundred thousand dollar SUV in your town. Oh, I have that. Uh, I have a BMW X7 outside, which is a hundred and thirteen thousand dollar SUV. The the funny thing about it is, um, the wife and I are driving around, and people don't know what it is, and so they don't appreciate the price point of it because they don't understand how much it costs. So yes, I. I'm doing my final wrap-up uh, video tomorrow on it. I'll be scheduled out for probably next week to go live. But, yeah, I've, I've been driving on a $113,000 uh, SUV. And uh, to be honest with you, and I'll say this in the video too, I don't understand the price point. It, it, there's nothing in that that really says to me $113,000. I had a, um, I think it's the second, second most expensive one I had. I had a long wheelbase diesel-powered uh, Land Rover two-door a couple years Four door a couple of years ago, I think that was one hundred and twenty thousand. So this is yeah, one hundred thirteen thousand. And one of the things that pisses me off is it's got summer tires on it, which is just the way it is. Um, he was hesitant to send it to me, but my weather's been kind of spring weather where it's been like snowing then dry then snow then dry. So it was okay, but yeah, it's 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 it is funny. It is it is it is different. I driving the one hundred thirteen thousand dollar SUV to Walmart getting groceries and coming home was kind of a it's just kind of a bizarre experience. Uh, give us the truth about writing. So I did that. Scotty's not discussing. Scotty has been a busy fellow. I was correct. Oh, jeez. I, I can't even watch that guy. Any price and stuff out of the market. What happened to those being an affordable family SUV? Care services. Car services will be able to afford it. Not sure about family. I, yeah, I don't understand that. Poor pickup. But, and, ooh, checked yesterday and it was in Colorado. Media shipping sucks. That's so weird that it takes so long to get here. One million mile truck is 1.6 million mile kilometer truck here. Yeah, I do. I know that, Jeff. There's a guy on YouTube, um, DeBoss Garage. He's got 1.6 million kilometers on a Dodge Ram pickup. He's out of, oh, what's that city across from Niagara Falls? You guys tell me in the comments. But anyways, he's out there. I looked at airfare and stuff, and I realized that 1.6 million miles is only like 900 and some thousand miles. So he doesn't, he doesn't have a million. Uh, WD, okay, not reading that one. Uh, Sam, not reading that one. I uh, got the bulk value. Tim, let's talk about poor radio selection in the Rangers we've seen in Chicago. 
Ooh, I'm amazed Nissan took crap about the radio and Titan, yet Ford gets away with four-inch screen still. Yeah, I, I, I think I saw some of your videos on that. Do you know I'm getting Ranger delivered tomorrow? And I can't wait because I have to go to the farm and have some stuff to do. And I get Tacoma delivered on Friday. So actually we'll be able to put both trucks together and do like a quick video walk around. Maybe I should live stream that. Hmm. I don't know. You guys want to see a live stream on Friday? I get both trucks and put them, park them together. Um, it's just the way it worked out. I, uh, I have a spot for three days. So Ford is going to be in a Ranger. And then I have they end so that dry, that the uh, media loan company ends and then the next one begins and i have the tacoma and then i basically have the tacoma for the weekend i fly out monday monday yeah i think it's monday monday or tuesday no i fly out monday for um uh, marquette michigan and i'm gone for a week so i kind of i have some rushed reviews coming up but it's just what happens in this business um so yeah, I uh, uh, the smaller screens, the Ranger is just a complete weird thing. It's like they wanted to redo it, and they didn't want to redo it, and then they just kind of did it. And so apparently there's a new Ranger coming. Apparently they're going to redo a whole new Ranger. I don't know. We'll see what Ford ends up doing. It's just weird right now in the auto market with Ford. Uh, Platinum Expeditions in a row. I guess the leaf probably. $600 a month lease. Shit, that's probably $70 a month. Like, God, I'm not cussing on this. Gosh darn it. You guys are bad influences. Four basic radio screens are... Yes, they have to be smallest in the class. Cheap two, four-inch screen. My phone is a bigger screen than that. Hmm, I think you're right. Uh, Ford Sync system is pretty outdated at this point. The new Sync 3? Yeah, I don't know. There's new Uconnect 5. Somebody told me that uh, they were going to... Uh, who was it? FCA, Fiat Chrysler, whatever. Um, has their new Uconnect 5.0 system, I believe it is. And the rep was telling me that 51% of buyers consider their purchase based on the car's infotainment screen. 51%. That was an interesting stat. And that two platinum exhibition costs here about 120000 Ryan Newman is in hospital. Hurt bad, or he's going to the hospital. Ooh. Yeah, I missed the race. Sorry. I, I actually like watching the Daytona 500. I usually watch it and I... I knew it was on today. I just, I well, I was working for you guys. I think Tahoe's price to no take sales from Blazer and Trailblazer. I got invited to the Trailblazer program, but I can't go. The Trailblazer first drive second week of March. Can't go, guys. Can't go. Sorry. Watch Amari King. He will tell you everything you need to know about Ford and Ford owners. Amari King. We pay a lot of import taxes. Amari King. I don't know Amari King. I'll look him up. Let's see. Amari King. Amari King. Oh, I was doing some research today. You guys want to see some interesting numbers? I'm gonna I'm gonna type these up so you guys can you guys can talk comment about these. I was, I'm doing a story. I'm writing a story right now. I didn't get a chance to write it. Um, kids were home all day. This 2019 sales 524231. You guys will like these numbers. No, four five two three three six. Okay, so I'm going to put these numbers on the screen. You guys can comment below if you see these numbers. Uh, these are the total sales numbers per year for the mid-sized truck market, according to me. Eh, could have done the math. There it is. Then by four to be a base model 4x4 with manual windows, rubber floors, and 5-foot long box. Pipe. Is it 5-foot if you do regular cab? I think you get 8-foot. I'm trying to, I need to call a dealer. I, if I can go over to the dealer, he has one waiting for me. I just need to go do a review on it. If it was a plug-in hybrid electric, we pay no import tax. Oh. That'd be yeah, and that makes sense in Puerto Rico. You could do a plug-in hybrid electric there. Ford gets way too much media from journalists. I think it's fine. You don't have as much Ford content. Oh, well, good. <laughs> I just feel like I need more of a truck channel. Uh, you, now you're talking my talk. Now after that, be mighty big if if I was by Ford to be the Whipple Supercharged XL F150, 725 horsepower, and four sets of tires. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Auto Vlog is doing it with his F-150, but yours would be more realistic. He's a speed toy. Yeah, I I feel like there's uh, guys who want to make them speed trucks or, like, guys who want to modify them a lot. I just want to make it a base level and, you know, add a tonneau cover. I don't know. Uh, that's why I'm happy with the Ranger plug-in hybrid is coming. Yeah, I'm, 
I'm curious what they can do there. Many of windows last longer because you never roll them down. <laughs> That's true. It's really weird these days. Um, when I get newer vehicles, I never roll on the windows. When I get my 62, I'm always running on the windows in the summertime. And newer vehicles, I don't do that. I don't know why that is. Um, in Minnesota, you pay $3,000 fee if you buy an electric vehicle, plus your registration costs more. Caring about the environment. Is that the uh, usage fees? I wonder if it's usage fees there. Fixie? Please tell me your kids did not get the interior dirty X7. Oh, yes, they did. The funny thing with them, and I'll, you'll see this in the video when it goes live, is the second row seats have like these um, padded headrests, like really plush padded headrests. And they got lots of leg room and USB galore and cup holders. I mean, second row is pretty nice. And my kids want to go to third row. They want to sit in the third row all the time. I was trying to do a video with them, and they were being such knuckleheads. I couldn't do a video with them. And uh, they uh, really irritated me. And so I, I'm going to sit in the second row of my video. But yeah, the, the second row is amazing. Uh, that being said, I see Teslas all the time here. It's a bimmer. They're all overpriced. It's extremely overpriced. I have a couple of Model 3 and I call X here, even though there's no service here. Huh. You can't take an X. I did take an X7 to Walmart. <laughs> I did. I should do. One of these days I'm going to do that. One of these days I'm going to do a, a Redneck Nebraska. I'm going to go get like the X7 or like some absurd thing that you'll never find here. Like film me going to like Home Depot and Walmart and I don't know where I'm going to go. Bowling alley, the little the hole in the wall bowling alley, maybe the hole in the wall bar. <laughs> and a funny thing to do. Uh, fuel tax and EV owners don't buy gas. Yeah, I've heard that argument, Fixie, several times, and that's something they're going to work on because the gas is built, gas tax is built in paying for roads. EV owners are, that's an interesting thing that I've seen legislation start fighting it out. I don't know where I feel on that. It could be both. It could be both. Import them from it. Da, da, da. Buffalo, New York, Hamilton. Oh, um, no, the Canadian city. It's, uh, mm. I looked up that guy's information, so wait a minute. It's the Canadian city. Who is messaging me? Um, Johnny Five is messaging me. Johnny Five, Ron doing live stream. It's, uh, what, uh, what's that? Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls. Okay, so it's across the, uh, oh, I guess it is Hamilton. No, it's somewhere else. It's right in there somewhere. It is. No. Nope. I was thinking Toronto. That's what I was thinking. But yeah, he's it, it's um, the boss garage, and I looked it up, and he's I basically fly into fly into Niagara Falls or fly into place and then drive over. But I don't know if I can because there's something about you can't take press vehicles over to Canada without getting some different um, uh, what do you want to call it different insurance and they get past lawyers kind of stuff. Before I'm all change that Ranger, I did not. <laughs> I actually asked for it about doing that, and they. Uh, I did not get a, a favorable response. <laughs> Live stream a side by side comparison to the Ranger and Tacoma would be pretty great. All right, I, I guess we can do it. I, it would give me additional video. Can you see if the Ranger has stake pockets hidden under a rail protector? I don't know. We'll take a look, Gene. I'll uh, I, I will uh, I will tease it on uh, YouTube. Um, I'll do the the reminder thing on YouTube. Put it on social media. I'll do side by side because yeah, it'd be interesting. Interior headroom in Tacoma versus Ranger. I want to see. I'm really curious about driving the Tacoma down. I, so I'm probably going to drive the Tacoma down to Denver. I have to go to Denver this weekend uh, overnight and come back. I'd be really curious to see what the the powered seat. If I still missed on that or still happy about it, I don't. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Uh, I missed the account line. It would make. It was made for Americans, not Europeans, like transit. Ooh, that's an interesting point there, Juan. I thought they were still building a kind of line. No, that you're right. They built the transit now. They still be uh, building an E-Ban. Damn it. I feel like they built an E-Ban somewhere. Uh, Mustang Mach-E is the only version of Ford Sync. You mean the Mach-E. See, you got me to say Mustang there. I see what you're doing, Elliot. 51%. Thanks, Palms. It was. I was surprised by that, too. 51%. Ranger, straight up. Uh, bowl and uh, Ford knows it who's already raised on truck that's been in the market for only a year. Yeah, from the 16 to 19 Titans is probably why a lot of people look past on. Yeah, it could be Kyle. It could be that they looked at that screen and thought, ooh, this is typical Nissan. I also thought the bigger screen was good. And the um, oh, I have an Infinity review coming out this week in a BMW X3 competition. M competition. Yeah, coming out this week. That'll be Tuesday, Thursday. 
I, 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 I will tell you this, guys. I've been working my butt off. I had uh, seven reviews I was behind on, and now I'm behind on one. I have to do a RAV4 hybrid. My audio got lost in the in the uh, GoPro. I may still save the GoPro audio and just play it because I really don't want to write that vehicle up. But uh, yeah, I, the, my freaking audio got lost on my on that GoPro, and that's the last one. And I and if I do this um, X7, I'll be completely caught up, and then those those will run while I'm in Marquette next week. So uh, Marquette, Michigan is going to be a really cool thing. I can't wait to show this to you guys. We're going up there. We're going to go uh, plow snow with Chevy Heavy Duties and Boss Snow Plows bringing their, their snow plows up. So I get Boss guys, I get Chevy guys. We're talking about independent front or independent front suspension on the Silverado and how you plow, plow snow with that, whether it's any good. Uh, talking about Boss Snow Plows. We're talking about how I'm going to run a snow plow, which I really like doing. Um, I, I've run a snow plow, I think, twice in my life so far, one with a Ford and one with a Ram truck. And as long as I do, do not have to do it for a living, I'll do it there. It's fun. It's fun for a day to, to plow snow, but that's not thing I want to do for a living. No, that's my brother did that. He'd work like insane 16, 18 hour days because that's how he made his money. But yeah, so um, I'm going to do that, but it's going to take me, I leave here at uh, 4 a.m. on Monday. I'm a, I fly to Scott's Bluff at 6. I land in Marquette, Michigan at 8.51 p.m. Eastern Time. Yeah, Podunk Airport of Nebraska to Podunk Airport in Michigan. I'll be flying all day. Uh, I will be uh, enjoying something while I'm flying. All right. So, honestly, the entertainment food, not yet. We did that. Here's my cell numbers. Tim is going to buy a Mustang. No, I'm not. Um, Gets that the range technology is new. I know. The old Titan screen was similar to the Frontiers. Range says the current one is based on the International Ranger that's been around since 2011. Yeah. That was pretty interesting. I think, I think they're going to change it up. That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing they're going to really change it up. Uh, Gene says, those are huge numbers. Aren't those numbers pretty impressive? You're up like 100,000 units a year. Pretty big numbers. Range from Australia, it's just changed from buyer. Yep, yep, yep. I spend a million if it doesn't need resign immediately. Certain channels are super biased towards Ford. Oh, really? Well, this channel is not super biased towards Ford. Trust me. I feel like I don't know much, much about them. I want to make my truck play in the mud. You should come down one of these days from Yellowknife, Canada. It's only a 24-hour drive. <laughs> uh, name plus gauge interest in existing one. Yes, to make money. Jeez. Oh, Every once in a while, the comments just like catch up. Like, and it's crazy. Uh, to make money, Brandon, same with the EcoSport. EcoSport was really more than very good. Um, Ranger Rams for the, yeah. I see X7 at supermarkets. You see them here. Zesty meatballs in the house. And Johnny Five was right. Um, that didn't last very long. It's good stuff, though. Traverse City Whiskey. I should. I, I tell you what, they sent me the whiskey for free. I, you're, you're dining at McDonald's. Fine dining at McDonald's, Jeff. And Yellow Knife. Really can't find a hole-in-the-wall place with a bunch of Eskimos in it? Okay. Um, that's what I do. I find it. We have little hole-in-the-wall the places here, and they sell uh, all sorts of good Nebraska food. And so I, uh, I, I, I visit those on occasion. I visit those on occasion. And uh, what, what's that name? Uh, um, Rocky Mountain Oysters. Rocky Mountain Oysters. Pretty good. That's fine dining. Take the X7 off road. No, it's snowing and the summer tires on it. It's, it's not going to happen. The X3 M competition. Did I take it off road? No, I did not. Took the Ranger off road, which I thought for sure I was going to crack something in the thing. Um, nice. Uh, crypt international market. The crypt selling. <laughs> yes, the Ranger was built overseas. They came to the United States. They realized they screwed up. All of a sudden, sales tanked. No. Turns out the people that weren't going up from a Ranger to an F-150, they didn't seem as very comfortable. Turns out. Mrs. 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 I can't even say it. You know, that'd be a lot easier but they just call it freaking Mississippi. Yes, that's but that's the name of that Canadian town, isn't it? You it's near yeah, it's in between Hamilton and, and uh, Toronto. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Alright, well let's, we'll figure this out. Uh, da, 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 I will find it out. Because it's on his about page. God, I can't believe you guys take away the entire intent of my live stream to make me look stuff up. Yeah, curveballs. Curveballs. Ah, da 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 da
Dunville, Ontario. I'm watch. I'm gonna be completely off. You guys can be like, this guy doesn't know Canada with a damn. And you're right. I don't really know much about Canada. And yes, I realize that's a funny thing about Canada is that uh, Americans don't know crap about Canada, but you guys should know a lot about America. I get it. Dunville, there it is. Ha ha. Dunville is west of Niagara Falls. Let me show you my screen. It's um, it's let me to the. I don't know if you can see it. It's all glary. Look it up. Dunville, Ontario. That's Niagara Falls. That's like Toronto. See? Ha, ha, ha. I knew what the hell I was talking about. All right. You guys question me. The auto journalist. Oh, I know what the hell I'm doing. I know what's going on. All right. Uh, not can. Changed. Oh. It was can. Feel like someone's bags of manure. <laughs> No, 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 no. I, I play nice with BMW. I will tell you, BMW is a hard company for me. It, 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 you know how I say I have, a rear, I have a blind spot with Ford and I want to know more about Ford? I don't know a damn thing about BMW. Uh, we just never had them growing up and I never did much with them. And so I really struggle with them quite a bit. And they keep sending me these SUVs. And I keep feeling like I give them not so hot reviews. And they keep sending them to me. So maybe like my honesty, maybe they're not watching. Something's going on there. Wow, that's warm. Um, so yeah, I I just I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But the BMW X3 was kind of fun. That video is hilarious because my kids are like flipping out in the back seats, which was surprised me. How much you guys will watch that uh, Tia or Kia Telluride video? You guys really liked that one a lot. I was surprised. And then blow it up. And then the, uh, these are reports, which, by the way, saw the $14 magazine. I am thinking about doing a mid-size SUV, like, behind the data. Let's look at what's going on behind the data. Yeah. So, oh, that's not the data. Yeah. So I thought about doing that. Oh, Tesla. Tesla gave them an 80 for the Model 3. Wow, that's really low, because I think the, uh, the lowest Ford, or the lowest full size pickup, it wasn't a Ford, full, lowest full size pickup, was it a Ford? I don't remember. Had like an 84. This is 80. Predictor reliability is uh, middle of the road. Owner satisfaction is really high. Well, it's Tesla, right? And uh, yeah, the uh, Model S is 83, so that's pretty poor. It's it, below the trucks. Uh, come on. We're, don't they make a, what's the SUV? Oh, the Model X. Holy cow! Okay, guys, you want to see this? If you can see it, it's on my uh, bright, glow ring looking damn thing. The Model X has a uh, overall score of a 57. Whew. Yeah, so I saw the magazine. Because I spent 14 damn dollars on it. Uh, let's see. He doesn't think the Boss Garage owns a million miles. Yeah, I, I can't tell. But it was a kilometer, so it wasn't quite a million miles because kilometer was different, right? But I was looking at him up because I was trying to find a Ram with a million miles on it. Update. NASCAR reports Newman's car flipped several times and crossed the finish line on his roof and golfed in flames. Oh, oh. That's not a good way to end the race. Um, I am working on it, Zesty Meatballs. I am working on it. I have Cummins involved. Cummins and I are working on that. We're trying to find something. Tim Ford makes the E350 chassis kept. That's what it was. They make an E something. Yep. Watching on TV when Dale Hearn at the... Uh, yeah, that was bad. I guess one of the works. Sweet Johnny 5. Tim, what's the full name of the new electric Ford vehicle? Mach-E. Uh, SUV question. Should Lexus have an Escalade competitor? I saw that news today. I saw that question come up. And I I think yes. I think absolutely. freaking lutely Because the... Um, LX570 is kind of a waste, right? You just spend the money on Land Cruiser. They could get rid of that completely. They could take a Highlander, make it bigger, add their growth. They could, just, they could do something here. And yeah, I think they're missing out on that. And I think it's definitely missing out. I think 1.4 million miles, but needs an next to it, so it's on a motor number three. Yes, yes, yes. Gets an asterisk. It's not, but it's, LA, it's not really, you can get it with, you can give a third row, but it's not really a true third row. It's, it, they need but it needs a longer rear end. It needs a bigger butt. Yeah, Lelex Street 5 City needs a bigger butt. 
they can fit a real third row back in there. Ooh. Ooh. I had a really good dinner. <laughs> that whiskey is a little fire coming up the uh, backside. Ooh. Uh, the, the throat. That Not that backside. This backside, yeah. Yeah, I did read that in Gene. I'm on Auto News like 15 times a day, and my friends are over there. They send me links all the time. And so, yeah, I was thinking about uh, that. I'm not sure. It's really interesting. I you can see it. All right. There's drama. You got, I cannot keep up. New to channel. Yes, join the conversation. Why not click one more time? Notification. I'm fine with that. But I think it's Lexus customers whining about it to dealers. I agree. Pickup truck plus SUV talk infotainment. It is infotainment. It is informational entertainment, isn't it? I make it fun, don't I? You guys have a good time on this. There's a lot more you guys watching these days than it used to be. I tell you what, I used to do these and be like one person watching it. I was like my wife. <laughs> uh, I should bring you some Alberta whiskey. You should. What? Burlington, Oakville, St. Catharines, Canada. Dunville. Dunville, yes. Oh. Jeff, with all things Canada, knows exactly where Dunville's at. There's no way we could meet and I will treat you to a nice time to talk about trucks. Yeah, someday. Get any golf down there and whiskey? I'm a pretty simple guy. Not too much to look up. I'm from Hamilton. Oh, I see. He knows where it's at. Nothing wrong with a place in motor, but I think it's a million miles. It's anything special when it's on a third motors. motor. So that's like three separate vehicles during... But why wouldn't you sell the truck, Johnny Five? If you've been through three motors, why wouldn't you sell the truck? QEW. I don't know. BMW. Bring my wall. Here we go. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, he's on H Podcast. David Boyd, what's going on? Should Lexus build a Tacoma-based truck for the States? No. Mercedes-Benz um, <laughs> or nothing. All right, so we're moving on. From the, no, that, that, that Mercedes-Benz X-Class thing was stupid. The Blackwood was... Uh, the bla Black. Lincoln Blackwood. Lincoln... Arr, Lincoln Pickup. Uh, that just was dumb. I think I don't think you need to anymore. Uh, I took the QEWM a trip from Detroit to Buffalo. Ooh. I bought it from a roommate's friend four years ago. I paid... I mean, I was just saying more. Hmm. Conversation going on. All right, you guys are talking amongst yourselves. Tim Brace of magazines are reading stories till Toby Super Cat. <laughs> I can hold you hostage when I read the magazine. <laughs> I like BMW vehicles, but every review I watch turns into history lesson on what BMW vehicles don't drive like anymore. I, I would agree with that. I read bitches about BMW, and I'm like, they drive. It's it's a to me, it's a good driving experience. More more of a driving experience than a numb driving experience I've had in other vehicles. But yeah, I, I'm not doing that. You know, any report? I I know it is not. It's called the Maki. What do you call the must? What do you call the Maki when it's painted tan? Macchiato. <laughs> uh, I resent that, Tim. I've been watching for a very long time. Remember when you celebrated a thousand subs? No, but I mean the first couple were like was like Mark and my wife and like a couple people. I don't know. Oh, when I go back, twenty five. When I scroll back, I have 522 videos on this channel. When I go way back to the beginning, holy cow, was that terrible. <laughs> it's just nothing good about it. Oh, it was bad. I'm getting better, thanks to my friend. Um, it, it's, it's, it's been fun. I've, I've really been watching how much better I've gotten over the years, how much more fun I'm having. And uh, this was the right, right decision to make. I'm really glad I started the channel. I really guys got the community of you guys. You guys talk to me about stuff, and we have a good time, and it's it's been it's been a lot of fun, and uh, I I can't wait to next five years, ten years, fifteen years, thirty five years. I don't really care. I'll be eighty years old with like nose hairs, drinking whiskey, sitting in a chair with a a boosted backside to keep me upright, and sipping in like having a catheter in while I do these damn things. But I just I just have a good time. Fire around, fire around. Okay. Fire around. Let's do it, Jeff. Let's fire it up. Number one, should Ram bring back the Ram Charger? Absolutely, they should. They're going to bitch about that as well. Ram dealers want a mid-sized truck right now because they feel like their cheap gladiator is not doing the job because it's overpriced. And uh, they feel like they need a mid-sized truck. And you know what? Ram doesn't have a big three-row SUV. Neither does Jeep. Jeep Wagon Air still coming out. The three-row SUVs are selling... Lots of profit, lots of people demand, gas prices are low, people want a bigger vehicle, so yes. Should GM rebadge the Suzuki Jimmy for entry-level 4x4? No, it will not pass KFA, it's going to be terrible, 
as far as cafe fuel economy, it's going to be terrible in emissions. GM does not have enough credits from the Volt sales and from their car sales to offset the higher emissions of the Jimmy. While we all would love a small 4x4 SUV, it ain't going to happen. The, uh, fuel, the fuel economy requirements and the emissions are going to kill that. Number three, should a major U.S. manufacturer name their pickup up the Nebraska? <laughs> yes! We have the Alaskan. We have the Montana, the Chevy Montana down in South America, or Mexico where they build that damn thing. Why not come out? We can have a Nebraska. Why can't you have the Husker? Can you imagine that, like the Ram Husker? I think it sounds great. That should be fantastic. All right. There we go. You was not <laughs> I was <wasn't> bad. <laughs> I'm so bad at these. Uh, it's, it takes a while to get used to this stuff, man. This stuff is just so... I was a writer at some scenes. I used to get hammered at press events just go and write about it. Uh, yeah. You did a great job, but you have, I have definitely involved. I will tell you that. It's been big. Uh, can you do more off-road video? I, I try to. I try to do whatever I can. Right now, it's the frozen ground outside, so it's hard to do that because there's not much going on. But I try to get them off-road whenever I can. The Range Rover is off-road, right? And uh, I'll do the... Well, the Snowplow video will be off, kind of off-road-ish. So it'll be something different. He plans for FCA to replace the 5.7 liter Hemi. I heard a while back on the line they're stopping the Hemi dealer being cafe. I'm hearing the same thing, Quan. I was talking to my friend who writes for All Par in Chicago, and I didn't even do this video, I haven't done it yet, is that they're looking at a three liter inline six to replace the Hemi. I don't see that. But yes, there's conversations about Hemi going away. They just have so much uh, marketing around the Hemi, I just can't, I don't know, I can't see it, but I have I have heard that. Uh, bring the Jimmy. I heard the Gladiators have incentives on price now since they can't sell them. That always happens. Um, you know, there's been big stories about the huge dealer marked, you know, dealer incentive pricing and such. Officially, Jeep's like, well, we don't care. They're talking about the Jeep Gladiator. We don't. That news is not bad news. They can't sell what a dealer does. But it just seems like there's a weird thing going on right now. Uh, did you see the leak of the Fisker's new pickup called Alaska? Yeah, my uh, my news editor, Carl Malek was actually writing a story about it I saw on PickupTruckTalk.com. 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 Because, you know, say it slower for y'all and keep y'all on the channel so you know what the hell I'm saying. Uh, yeah, so I've heard that that uh, truck is coming out, but come on. We're going to have 15 manufacturers of electric trucks going to sell 200,000 units, maybe. And that 80% of that's going to be the Cybertruck because Tesla... Yeah, I, don't, I just don't get it. Money on them minus the Ruby. I miss the old Suzuki. All right. Suzuki's still like the eighth largest lottery maker or something. Kind of crazy. I looked it up the other day. So I wanted to see how far Nissan fell in the rankings. And uh, Suzuki still is on there pretty high. So this has been an hour. It's been an hour and uh, three minutes. I should end these because I don't like to go past an hour. How about a tire test? You could use Sweet. I did, uh, Gene. I used, uh, I have uh, winter snow tires on. I need to put on, I haven't put on Sweden. And I have uh, the tires I have right now. And it just tire tests are visually in from a video standpoint, not that interesting. But yeah, I I did, uh, I do have a set of snow tires. There's a video on that. Oh, should I find it for you? I'll find you the video because it's a lot of fun. It's, you know what it is, Gene? It is snow fun. Oh, ha, ha. you see what I did there, didn't you? Yes, you did. And uh, snow fun. Is uh is uh, uh David? Are you still on here, David? David, do you think I'm as fun in person as I am in my videos? This is the thing. I met David. Uh, what was it two weeks ago? Whatever it was in Chicago. And uh, I'm curious, David, am I as fun in person as I am in my videos? This is a big question. David, behind the scenes, David has met me. He has a photo of me and him together. That goofy photo because I was moving on to something else. I was doing uh, snow tire. Aha! There it is right there. Now I have snow tires. I did two videos. One video. I got a little weird. I found. So, David, you can answer that video. I'm finding this other video. I'm going a little long tonight. I do uh, do apologize for that. Let me find this link. So, I gotta find this link. Oh, wait. It's the right link. There it is there. Alright, so I killed that. And I need a new computer these days. I really need a new computer. Alright. Boom! Alright. Bye, everyone. Yes. <laughs> All right, Taylor. This is for you, buddy. I am signing off on the on this live stream, but I am going to give you the recap. The news is the Bronco will be unveiled next month. That's news.
the baby Bronco will be in April uh, at the auto show. They're thinking in, the, in New York. I probably won't be there. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm reading I'm reading David's comment. Um, he, uh, it's going to be in April at the, the New York City Auto Show. It's the thing of Baby Bronco, but next month's supposed to be the Bronco. Um, it is February 17th. I have no invite from Bronco. I don't know if anybody else has. Maybe I don't get to go. I don't know. That's the deal. That's what we know. So I'm waiting. Yeah, it should be interesting who it's going to be. All right, guys. I am out of here. We will catch you all tomorrow. Or not tomorrow. What am I saying? We'll catch you Friday. I think I'll do a live stream of those two trucks together. and Because uh, it will be interesting to see you guys questions you guys have i have a a spot outside i just park them nose and nose it's kind of my area i was gonna mess with me at all so i will i will fire up the uh uh phone on friday do a live stream from my house and uh we will do it outside with the two trucks together and you guys can give me comments there and i will do yeah i did see your message any five i uh i will uh i will do those reviews things going out next week's gonna be exciting with marquette snow plowing with chevy that's going to be awesome. And then I'm off on vacation for a week. I'll be responding to comments, but I will not be doing videos. That's what's going to be. So, sorry, Taylor. This is an hour and five minutes long live stream. Later, guys. We will catch you down the road. Yeah, that's what I got. <laughs>